me. Okay, I'm ready now. Good. That's what makes <laughs> this even more entertaining. Neither of us are oh ready. Oh my gosh. Welcome, listeners. Right. It's the Muscle Science for Women podcast. Brand oh spanking God. new, featuring your favorites, me and Rachel. <laughs> Ash <laughs> and Rachel. Ash Take and Rachel. the world. Crushing it. Uh, so we're just going to dive right into like the kind of new style, which is airing of grievances, um, chatting about things that irritate us in the health and fitness world, and also maybe answering some questions and providing some valuable insights. Yes. Hopefully. I mean, um, before we do get started, just to let everyone know, if you are so inclined to watch us have this conversation, we are on YouTube as well. Uh, we'll link that in the description. Um, you know, we are, you know, working on our lighting and we are talking off air how, you know, we're trying to get to that Joe Rogan level, but, um, you know, it is what it is. So give us your feedback. If you, um, you like to watch us, you know, we might have some special guests that come in, maybe a dog. Okay. Yeah. This <laughs> maybe we maybe should like, dog. <laughs> should we, cu- should we cut? <laughs> no, I think no. this is, cr- this is the point. This is the point. Okay. <laughs> and she's out of the picture. She's gone. <laughs> this is the whole point. Okay. I talk a lot with my hands. Rachel Same. just left the screen entirely. <laughs> this is why you should be watching us on YouTube. This is a hundred percent not getting cut. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, I but like if you like to watch in the background, is that a robe? It, it it's a robe like coat. Yeah. Yeah, oh. it is. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, it gets coat. cold up here. Have you ever been to Ontario, Canada? I have not. I have not. Okay. Did I tell you that I am a quarter French Canadian? Yeah, I did know that, and I'm very uh, impressed. Okay. How much cool. French do you know? Um, none. <laughs> okay, we'll work on that. I, I actually yeah. don't know that much either, but I know enough to get by. Uh-huh. But that's actually something that um, I wanted to talk to you about offline, but since we're online, let's talk about it, is, you know, we've been going back and forth about when we're going to get together and, like, film some more content, do some more stuff for the program. But, you know, you and we're always saying, like, oh, I'll come to San Diego, obviously, because why mm-hmm. not? Or, like, let's meet in New York, because we both have – you know, reasons to be in New York all the time. Um, but you know, you can come up North. You can come to I know. Canada. I would show you a good time. Just don't come in the winter. That's all. Like yeah. between the months of like June and October, it is a good time okay. to be in Ontario. So throwing out the invite. Well, maybe I should come in October because that sounds, or like beginning of October, end of September. And we can like Very do some fun. stuff. And yeah. if we've got the program running then, which yeah. is the plan, we could do yes. some stuff in person. That could be really fun. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll, okay. we'll we'll book it. We'll figure yeah. it out. I think that would be cool. Yeah, we'll plan um, that offline. Okay. Yeah. So, and I was saying, like, in the background, when I was saying the dog, like, you know, if you're watching, there might be, like, a dog that pops up or, like, a baby that just randomly baby. appears. Yeah, so, yeah, like... The baby will just randomly yeah. appear. He'll just open that door. He'll crawl From in. The, he'll be like, he'll come what's and put up, on guys? the coat, the robe coat. Exactly. Coat robe. Put on the robe coat. It'll be great. Okay. Oh my gosh. Moving on. Moving we on. are setting some lofty intentions for this podcast. And one of them being, we talked about this um, the first time we tried to record this episode. One of them being is we are hoping to get the one, the only Kim Kardashian on this podcast. We're putting it out into the universe. And the reason we're doing that is because we have a couple questions for her. Namely, <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? Why? Why would you? Why? That's my question. That would be my first question for her. But more specifically, that's a great question. <laughs> more specifically, around her new, I'm going to be the spokeswoman for Beyond Meat. When I guess, I mean, I said I've never actually like watched the show. Honestly, I'm not trying to be like too cool. I've watched a lot of garbage TV. I just didn't watch any of her um, stuff. But apparently, like they have a pretty good history of like crushing barbecue and stuff. Like, but mm-hmm. all of a sudden because probably somebody gave her a ton of money. She's the new spokesperson for Beyond Meat. And I'm not pumped about it. I'm not happy about it. She can do whatever she wants. But, I mean, like, you have enough money, dude. Do you have to, like, trick women into eating garbage now on top of that? Like, just make them buy your underwear, right? (laughs) Right? Like, no, and I said this offline. Like, I had a rant on social media because – We've talked about this before, and, like, people can kind of roll their eyes and be like, Ashley, maybe you're looking too into this, but I would fight you tooth and nail because I do not think I'm looking too far into this. The way that we gender food, the way that we Mm. make certain food more 
um, appropriate for women or men based on like the different insecurities that we are trying to hit, you know? So like all of this, women have to eat light and reduced fat and women have to eat yogurt and salads and red meat is masculine and all of this stuff. And there really is, I think, a very strong push for women, especially because we are like the consumers, you know, like we do most of the consuming, the buying of products for our families. We are the ones being pushed this light, healthy, sustainable alternative of like Franken foods, basically, that are garbage. And she's a perfect example of that. Because like I said, when I did this rant originally on Instagram, I'm like, I don't think too many dudes are going to like see Kim Kardashian pretending to eat a Beyond Meat burger and being like, you know what? That seems like a good idea. I'm going to do that. Like, no, it's women. It's women who are watching that. And it pisses me off because our whole shtick is trying to get women to, you know, be as healthy as they can be. And I don't think that this Mm -hmm. supports that. Yeah, I agree. And speaking of red meat, I think this brings us into um, something that happened to me. I think it was like a month ago. I went to um, get like an annual physical just, you know, because it's part of the crazy amount of money I spent on insurance um so I was like oh yeah yeah uh, yeah. so yeah so I was like oh I'll just do it whatever um (laughs) and I had a new doctor and we were going through all like the general stuff right all the the typical physical stuff and she started to ask me about my diet and I started just to tell her I was like yeah I eat a lot of protein and she was like oh she's like what kind of protein do you eat and I was like oh like I eat you know chicken and red meat and fish and, and all that stuff, like all the good stuff. And she's like, Oh, like how much red meat do you eat? And I'm like, eh, probably like four to six ounces a day. And she's like, like literally this was her, like her jaw dropped. I'm not kidding you. She was like, Oh my God, are you serious? And I was wow. like, yeah. And she's like, Oh, like you could see her like typing her notes. She's you like, will die tomorrow. To yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, in my head I'm just like rolling my eyes because I was like okay like I could go off on this right now and just like rant about it um but then she proceeds to go did you like she stops with her notes and she goes did you know like women your age are only supposed to eat a max of 45 grams of protein a day a day 45 grams of protein a day and so my drop my drop my jaw (laughs) proceeded to drop Mm -hmm. and I was like um Sure. And I was like, all right, do I go off? Like, do I, do I do it? And I was already kind of late for another appointment. So I was just like, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut and just be like, all right, whatever. Um, but I left and I like, um, like I went into my, like, cause I have the, you know, membership group coaching. I like did this whole rant in there. I was like, ladies, listen to what just happened to me. Like, this is why you can't take nutrition advice from a conventional doctor unless they have previous, you know, nutrition training because that is just in my in my opinion that's malpractice like literally telling someone that they should be eating a max of 45 grams of protein a day like a, that a female even sound, that sounds like less than even like the survival amount like the RDA exactly yeah exactly and I was like so like she first of all it's not correct information because it is less than the RDA I believe mm-hmm. second of all the RDA like you said is based off of what is the amount that you need to eat to literally just survive, right? Which is not what we want. We want to thrive. We want to be optimal, right? And like, don't even, you know, go down the the red meat path, right? Because that probably would have been a whole other thing. Um, But just the fact that she said that, I was just like, this is ridiculous. And this is why I think, you know, when we talk about this all the time, like when we work with our with clients, we have com- women coming to us, especially for, you know, any woman that I start to work with who is not already kind of in this space and like has listened to us before, they are severely under eating protein. Like that's like the, the biggest thing, right? And so once we change that, that just makes everything so much easier in terms of just what they're doing, building muscle, being overall healthy, hair not falling out, joints feel- feeling better, all that jazz. Um, So yeah, I was just kind of blown away and I was like, this is wrong. Like, this is not okay. Um, I have some questions for you. Yeah. So in the context of her being the worst and telling you that you're going to like die from eating too much protein, did she say, did she also say like, but you know, you obviously look healthy. You're like, weight is fine. Your digestion is fine. Your blood markers are fine. Your blood pressure is fine. Like, was she like, yeah, despite the fact that I think what you're doing is terrible, you are the picture of health. Like, did she acknowledge any of that? 
not real. Well, basically, she said at the end, I mean, I had gotten my labs done like just right before I came. So we didn't have any of those back. But um, she there was like no issues or anything like that. And like I had perfect lab, like all the stuff was normal, all that stuff. Um, I didn't have like, you know, considered high cholesterol, anything like that, you know, and I'm sure she was just looking at total cholesterol, which we know you can't just look at that. Um, but I didn't have any of those markers that were out of, you know, the conventional ranges or anything like that. So yeah. Um, yeah, none of that was said. And I think it just kind of shows like that this is not, I don't know, this is not okay. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. like getting mad about it again. So I'm, are like, you pissed. going back to this doctor or what are you going to oh, do? Oh no, definitely not. So then what happens though? Do you like, do you just kind of search for another doctor or are you going to well, see like a functional medicine person or what are you going to do? Yeah. Like I don't really go to the doctor <laughs> yeah. like ever. And this is probably like, this is the first time I've had a physical and I'm sure like, you know, I don't recommend this. Like you should get a physical every, every year, right. Just to check things. And you know, if something's coming up and whatever things are, you know, you're noticing something like you should, you know, go to doctor, go, go to like get checked up. But if it's something specific and it's like related to preventative medicine, right. Where we're looking to like optimize your health and like look at the actual markers that are, that we want, like the ones that are going to be more of the functional ranges versus like the conventional ranges. And I'm not like an expert in this, so we could probably talk um, a little bit more about that. Or maybe we'll have like in the future, have guests on that are, you know, functional medicine doctors and we can talk, ask them about this stuff. But I think that, you know, for me, it's just, I went, honestly, I went to that appointment because it was for, like, it was part of my insurance. Mm -hmm. um, and so if I have any other issues, I probably will just have, you know, um, go to a functional doctor or, you know, talk to people who actually, you know, do this for a living and, and look at the whole picture, not just, you know, what one marker says on a lab or follow like old advice from, um, or old markers from the RDA that are like completely yeah. out of date and not based off of like legitimate research really. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the lessons that we can take from this again, like people like to go very black and white with this stuff. So some people might be like, you know, traditional doctors are the worst and they just want to kill you and make you sick yeah. and you should, you know, just sit outside in your bare feet and eat raw liver and never go to the doctor. <laughs> Maybe that's not the right answer. I think that what we need to remember with any kind of healthcare professional is like, what is their job? So a mm -hmm. traditional doctor, especially somebody who like a, a family doctor or whatever, somebody who's been around for a long time, they aren't nutritionists. They don't study that. They don't understand. They're usually like behind the eight ball with that more than the average person who's reading about it. That's not what their expertise is. And like, I think about a similar kind of scenario because I also never go to the doctor unless there's like something wrong with me. So mm -hmm. last year when I was pregnant and I had, you know, I was having a baby and I had my, I didn't go to a doctor. I went to a midwife, but I was getting like blood taken and all this stuff and getting checked like more than I had in like my entire life previous because I've been fortunate, you know, to not have to have gone to a doctor much. But in my decision of trying, of deciding to go with a midwife versus a, like an OB is OBGYN doctors, they are so important. They are surgeons. They will get a baby out of you if there is an emergency or if your life is in danger or the baby's life is in danger. Thank God we are in a time when those people yeah. exist and they can do that stuff. But if I am having a healthy pregnancy and I'm planning to have a low intervention birth, I know things can change. Why would I, why would I put myself in the care of a surgeon who that's their mindset? Their mindset is get the baby out the quickest, easiest way possible. Mm -hmm. When I want to get the baby out the most natural, least medicalized way possible. So I'm going to go with the expert at getting babies out that way. And that's what a midwife is. And that's the experience that I had. And I think it also goes back to, you and I were talking about this offline, like the, the idea of advocating for yourself and feeling like you can speak up. Because again, it seems like in this day and age, we either think that doctors are quacks and terrible, or we think that they know better than us in everything all the time and you can't ever ask a question. And as we know, the answer is in the middle, right? Doctors mm -hmm. have a lot of knowledge and most of them are very good and they want to help you, but they have limited 
knowledge. And even if they have more knowledge than you, you are allowed to ask them questions. You're allowed to challenge things. You're allowed to say, well, I read this or I heard this or I'm trying this and it's working and I'd like your feedback, whatever. And if you have a doctor who shuts you down or tells you you're nuts or tells you whatever, you also have the ability to kind of seek out guidance elsewhere, right? Like mm -hmm. that's, and I think that just knowing that you're allowed to ask questions, question mm -hmm. authority, you know, um, I think that that's an important thing for us to remember. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And I just think like my issue is just like the blanket statements, like, you know, women are not supposed to have greater than 45 grams. Per like if I didn't have the knowledge that I have, I would have been like, oh, oh, I should probably, you know, go eat a lot less protein. But so that's like, that's what I was saying. Like, it's kind of malpractice to me because, you know, we see all the issues that come with not eating enough protein specifically for women. And especially as you age, um, we know that as you age, you know, protein becomes even more important. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't think that, I don't think we should say like, Hey, all doctors suck because no, like we just have to, you know, realize what their specialty is. And, um, you know, if they don't have any prior nutrition training, which some do, right. Especially now, I feel like so, I mean, doctors that we know now have like cert have gone and actually taken the extra step to get certifications in nutrition and, you know, study that stuff and be up to date with that. So, you know, obviously those aren't the ones we're talking about, but, um, but yeah, definitely, you know, be your own advocate, do your own research. You know, that is something that, you know, you need to do for yourself too, because, I can promise you like, you know, I'll probably 90% of the conventional doctors that you would go to only have like a few hours of nutrition, you know, mm -hmm. expertise or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. not, not expertise, but a few, a few hours of nutrition training when they go through that. So yeah. yeah, I mean, ask questions and also get second opinions and third opinions mm -hmm. and all that jazz, just like everybody always tells you probably. Um, so yeah. Yeah. And don't, you know, let's not vilify anything outright, but it's about getting somebody who matches their expertise matches the issue that you're having right mm -hmm. like if you're if you've got i don't know tendinitis you're not gonna see a gut health person and yeah. vice versa like go seek out the resources that are going to align with what the issue is that you're having um so mm -hmm. yeah and i mean i do think honestly it is different in the states than in canada let's be real yeah i've i've dealt with both medical systems and like I guess one of the arguments you can make for the American one I don't think there's many but one is like if you have the money um you can get the best care in the world but mm -hmm. most of us a lot of people don't have that kind of money and yeah. the second the second opinion thing is big because when I first moved to New York which was a million years ago now but when I first moved to New York and I was in my like mid-20s and I, that was when CrossFit was like just getting big. And of course I joined a CrossFit gym and that's how I mm. made like my first friends in New York. Don't regret it. But I, I went to a like CrossFit strongman cert. So it's like where you're learning to like lift the heavy, like the Atlas mm -hmm. stones and like all kinds of crazy stuff, which was super fun. I really liked it, but I severely injured myself like the oh first gosh. day of this workshop by basically it was tire, it was um, tire flips, really heavy tire mm. flips. And it was just poor form. And I basically tried to like bicep curl like a 400 pound tire or something and like something in my shoulder ripped. And that started like a year long process through the New York City medical system and physical oh therapy and all those things. But the long story short is that I had an appointment with a, I guess, a doctor, a surgeon, whatever, who told me that I had like a labral tear and would need surgery. And everybody knows how intense and awful and involved that surgery is. And I went and got a second opinion and an MRI and everything. And the person was like, no, you have like a floating chip of a bone that kind of came, mm. whatever, and it's going to be reabsorbed and it's like soft tissue and you need to go to PT for six months and you'll be fine. And I was. So mm. if I didn't get a second opinion or ask a question or say like, hey, I want to think about this. If I had just said like, oh, you're the doctor. Okay. Like sign me up for the surgery. Things yeah. would have gone very, very differently. So yeah, always ask questions. Always get a second opinion. Yeah. A hundred percent. I made that mistake too. This was with the dentist though, that I was went to when I was in my, living in Miami. Um, so yeah, it's not just like your, it's all, all, all the things, right. Always get a second opinion. Always. If something's like, seems off to you and you're like, huh, I don't know about this. Like go with that, go with your gut. Um, yep. so yeah. Um, before we go, cause I think we can keep this one short and sweet. Um, yeah. what did you think about living in Miami? Did you like it? I mean, obviously it's kind of like you were there for school, right? 
yeah, I was there for school, but then I went back after grad school. Okay. Would you, are so, you like, you know, are you over uh, it now or would you like, like to live there again? Or what do you think? I don't know. Like I like Florida, but I'm over the traffic. I'm over having to drive everywhere, especially living in San Diego where, and where I'm at, I can just walk everywhere. So it's kind of like a mini Manhattan, which is mm-hmm. where I grew up. Um, but I mean, I'm going back or yeah, I'm back in Florida for July for vacation for a week. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I would move back there. Hmm. I like the weather, but then it gets really humid and hot. So I might just hang out in San Diego for a while. Yeah. I don't blame you. Yeah. Before we knew each other, um, my husband and I took a, uh, like three week vacation. Cause that's what we could do before we had kids. Anyway, yeah. um, we like to go places and like, just live there for like three weeks, a month, whatever. And we did that in San Diego and it was a pretty good time. We did lots of like jogs along a boardwalk and like bike riding yeah. and stuff. And the weather was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you should come back and hang yeah, out I'm definitely me. planning on it. I'm thinking like, we're going through the process of like, where are we going to go next winter because like I told you you know Ontario in the summer hot sunny beautiful Ontario in the winter frozen hellscape nightmare so we're trying to get out of here we're trying to debate where we've got a couple places up in the air so I'll keep you posted on that but anyway and if anybody who's listening, so dope. yeah because we are you know we want some feedback anybody who's listening if you have some suggestions for me about where we should spend our winter hit me <laughs> up and then any other actual pertinent questions that you have for us related yeah. to the podcast, related to fitness, nutrition, health, wellness, we will yeah. talk about them on the podcast. Like send us a message on social media. You can find me on Instagram at the muscle maven and Rachel, you are Rachel Gregory dot CNS on yes. Instagram and TikTok. I'm trying yes. to Get bring TikTok there. to the, Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, wait, I have a question too. And oh, I mean, I don't know. I was just gonna ask like, are we, we have a sponsor for this podcast or is that, are we that's not talking That's a really about good that? question. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's a really good question. And I forgot, but we do, we do have a sponsor um, because we are so awesome and everyone loves us. We have a sponsor. The sponsor is Optimal Carnivore. I'm just going to look up right now what the actual like discount code and fanciness is for you. Okay. Um, did you get your products by the way? I did. And I've been okay. taking the, uh, the not the liver one because there's a one that's liver the the, the all-encompassing organ one for like yes. the past week okay. um and i've basically replaced kind of like my multivitamin that i that i was taking before um with that because i am i mean we can talk all about supplements too probably next episode um, yeah. i am in a deficit right now pretty aggressive with my video shoot that i'm prepping for so i'm just kind of trying to optimize everything so i'm taking you know more supplements than i would typically take if i was you know eating at maintenance or whatever you want to call it. And, um, we can talk about that in the next episode, but yeah, I've been taking them and cool. Yeah. yeah. You, it would be a good idea actually for us to, to, if we're being good sponsors and transparent people to actually like take these pretty, you know, religiously for a while mm-hmm. and actually like keep track of how it feels. So for people who are like, what is optimal carnivore? These are, they make supplements that are essentially whole food supplements, but with some other like kind of nootropics and mushrooms and tasty stuff, but it's basically, um, like organ meat, uh, supplements. So for people who don't want to eat it, but they want the benefits because they've been listening to me and they know how important liver Mm -hmm. is. Um, but you're like, look, I'm not going to eat this. So I don't blame you. Uh, optimal carnivore has a a range of products. Um, and they're good. I mean, like you said, we've only been trying them for a few weeks, but they're really, really high quality grass-fed, organic, good stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And they have different formulas for different things. There's sort of like a brain-focused one. um, And then there's the sort of just overall health supplement. That's the beef organs. That's the one Mm -hmm. I personally recommend. That's um, what I'm taking, yeah. Yeah, that's the one I recommend for anybody who is like kind of just getting started to this because I Mm -hmm. think of it as like essentially a um, multivitamin. Like it's just the most nutrient-dense food you can eat in a capsule form. so that's it. But anyway, um, mm-hmm. there, the discount is it's, I don't think it's a very cool one. It's muscle <laughs> sci muscle S C I cause muscle science was too, uh, too long. long. So <laughs> muscle sci will get you, uh, 10% off and Sweet. we'll put all the details and the link and all the fancy stuff in the show notes. And we'll be posting about this stuff, um, on social mm-hmm. media too, because I am going to start taking the brain one, like, religiously and see if it makes yeah. me smarter 
because yeah i want to know that too and i have that too but i haven't started it yet so yeah um, so thank you to optimal carnivore and thank these yes. guys for like basically just hitting the ground running with us with this new podcast because they obviously know what i'm about they know i'm like a big mm -hmm. organ meat person but i told them look we're doing this big pivot with the podcast um we want to reach more women we want to get women strong and healthy and mm -hmm. eating protein and maybe even eating organ meats and they were like we're on board so we appreciate those Love guys it. a lot um, thanks for the reminder. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, I was like, I should probably mention something, but then like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah that would be a good idea. Um, yeah. all right. So like we said, reach out to us, please rate review. If you're liking it, share it with anybody you think could benefit and send us your questions, comments, feedback about the podcast, how it's going so far. Be gentle. We're two episodes in, um, but we'd love to hear from you. So yes. let us know and, uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Yes. Bye.